How's it going everyone? It's Sam. Something just blew up crypto-wise and I want to explain what it is. Uh, it's something really important for us and it's something very bullish for the next couple weeks, maybe a month. It's going to drive the market and in institutional demand. If you don't mind, hit subscribe, turn on the bell notification underneath the video so you can see future videos like this one as soon as I make them. Also, if you haven't already joined HG Access underneath the video, I would highly suggest it. We've been talking about a lot of cryptos that have blown up recently. Sync up 55% from our original from our original call. Operation Phoenix up 6,300% since launch, and close, uh, very close to hitting a new all-time high. Operation Phoenix continues moving up. Eight protocol is on the move, bringing our total to 208%. This is all as of today. Smog up, making a total gain of 267% up. So definitely check out the links to this underneath the video. There's also a link down there to Margex in case you want to start trading cryptocurrency on leverage. This paired with the algorithm that we're now that is now uh, released as well, where it gives you bullish and bearish momentum it can be killer. Like it's really good. This. This indicator is really good at telling when the market is moving up or down. Like look at all these green areas. Most of them go up right after uh, the, the bearish momentum kind of just go sideways or even down. And this also helps you with dollar cost averaging. You can turn on the DCA as well, which tells you when you should probably be looking to dollar cost average. And depending on what time frame it it shows different uh, DCA signals. So if you zoom out, it tells you a little bit more uh, broadly when you might want DCA in or DCA out. And you can also set up alerts. This is something that I just learned that we can do today. You can actually have these alerts sent to your email so that way you don't have to watch the chart all the time. You can just set it so that on the five minute, it gives you a notification. If we turn bullish, you can come over to Margex, open your long, make a ton of money, then go back uh, to working or whatever you're doing. So really cool, check these out underneath the video. now. We actually just saw a country go into recession at the same time that Bitcoin is moving to an all-time high and it's a global superpower. I want to talk about that, but before we get into that, we should talk about this. Coinbase just announced earnings. Now, just so you know what was expected. They're expecting 0.27 in EPS and 818 million in revenue. And to be clear, they were down about 3 or 4% within a minute of when they announced earnings. Now they're up 8%. So again, they're expecting just about 0.27 and they came in at earnings per share of a dollar and 4 cents. So they beat by like 300%. Revenue was also higher than expected, about 130 million higher than expected. And the reason this is really important is it shows that that there's money to be made in crypto again. We can also look at specifically where they're making money, who's trading, what they're trading, because they give a lot of this data just in their report here. Now, of course, we're going to be looking for their comments on the market when they have their earnings call. But this is really important here, too. You want to talk about a company that's become more efficient? Coinbase has not gone out and talked about how efficient they're going to become they just did it. Take a look at some of these numbers. They made actually less revenue this year than last year. So the revenue is actually down in 2023 versus 2022. But they had a net income loss of $2.6 billion in 2022. And they have a net income gain of $95 million this year. So not huge numbers, but they're becoming much more profitable even from last quarter. The adjusted EBITDA also flipped a lot. So you can see like they made less revenue, and yet they had almost a $3 billion switch or a $3 billion difference in net income from one year to the next. Now, part of that is probably the accounting rules, uh, how they're changing, but take a look at this too. The transaction revenue is down for consumers. It's also down for institutions. You can see overall down, what, 30%? So they're charging less for transactions, but some of their subscription models have actually grown Stablecoin revenue went to 700 million this year versus 245. A lot of that, obviously, just because there has been uh, more money coming in and sitting in stablecoins and rates are higher, so they're making more money from it. Blockchain rewards a little bit higher. Interest income almost double. Custodial fee revenue down a little bit, which that will probably turn around, I would think. You can see Q4 was the best 
the best month of the year. Uh, that will probably continue up as they're working with more ETFs. Other subscription and services revenue also up 138 million versus 110. So overall, this is almost doubled their subscription and services revenue almost doubled. And it's about to pass their transaction revenue, which I actually think is a very good sign. Because they can't continue charging really expensive rates to transact and crypto people will move other places or use other apps. And you can see also the trading volume going down a lot. This was surprising to me that the trading volume was half what it was in 2022 for consumers under half and institutions. It was still down significantly as well. So the total transaction or the total trading volume was actually much lower than 2022, which could account for why obviously their transaction revenue was lower, but they also just leaned up like Obviously, they made more in revenue uh, from subscriptions, but they cut down on expenses a lot. Six hundred thirty million in transaction expense, twenty twenty two, four hundred twenty in twenty twenty three. Sales and marketing got cut down by thirty percent, forty percent. Technology and development, a billion dollars was cut off from the year before. Six hundred million in general and administrative. Crypto asset impairment actually flipped. Uh, restructuring went up a little bit. So overall though, total operating expenses were cut by $2.7 billion. So <laughs> this company has become leaner and meaner throughout the bear market and is actually starting to grow again, right? They are making more money. This last quarter was really good for them and they blew out expectations, which is why they're up so much in the post market, up 8%. This is after the stock has already been on a massive run throughout the last year, like it's up significantly. So this sets the tone. It shows that crypto is back. These companies are back. And this is all really exciting. So I would not be surprised if this caused more FOMO in the market. Now, something else that might cause FOMO is all time highs. And in the US dollar, we're not hitting all time highs yet. But in Japanese, in the Japanese yen, we are hitting all time highs for Bitcoin significantly, like six or seven million yen to one Bitcoin before. Now we're at 7.8 million. This is the same day that Japan officially shrinks unexpectedly and goes into recession. So their GDP went down by 0.1% in the three months uh, ending in December. And now the world's fourth largest economy is in recession. This is interesting. At the same time that Bitcoin's saying all time high. So if you're there and you're looking and you're thinking, wow, man, this, this sucks. We're in recession. But then you see Bitcoin's hitting all time highs. Maybe you decide I want to move some of my money from traditional stocks, traditional uh, investments, and maybe I want to move it over to Bitcoin to get some outsized returns. So I would not be surprised if more of that happens. I believe Japan is also the country that's trying to get an ETF approval at the moment. Trading volume update for the Bitcoin ETFs. IBIT 500 million. GBTC over 450 million. So a lot of people trading GBTC. I'm guessing selling. That's what we typically see from GBTC. Maybe this is the start of the selling. This could very well be the start of the selling from, what was it, Genesis? They got court approval. I would not be surprised if a good amount of this is from Genesis because we had barely seen any selling from GBTC over the last five days. I think that the increase, the 5x increase in trading volume has to be attributed to something. And literally yesterday was when the court gave approval to start selling uh, GBTC. So this may be why the price of Bitcoin is going down a little bit now under 52,500 like it was this morning or 50 almost 53,000 that could be why we're seeing some selling pressure but this is just a blip on the radar as we said like the selling from Genesis that 1.3 billion dollars that is like two days of these ETFs swallowing up bitcoin so just a roadblock and we can already see like bitcoin's made a massive move if we just scroll out a little bit scroll out look at the one day here Bitcoin has been making a massive move since since we fell down after the ETFs. It's just been nothing but green days, like just massive rally. 
And typically we would we would see a big pullback. Like we would see a pullback back to 48 maybe, something like that, maybe even 46, 47. And then a, a, we would continue moving up. But this kind of selling pressure from Genesis is just causing us to go down like a percent on the day. Barely anything. That's kind of crazy when you think about it that way. So we'll have to see who exactly is selling this. But I, again, I think that there's one company that's probably selling. Now, if you aren't already invested in cryptocurrency, if you're not already invested in Bitcoin, if you're not already invested in tech stocks, I would suggest it. I, I am also invested in tech stocks. And part of that is this just this massive move to um, AI that I think is happening. OpenAI just introduced Sora, uh, which is a text to video model. And they can create 60 second uh, videos with high definition, complex camera motion, multiple characters, emotions. And the videos are really impressive, really, really impressive. I mean, if you can create videos, like how much would this have cost to make just a little character like this, a little animation, that would probably have been really expensive to design this and make the motion and all that. And you can just text something like this within two minutes and it will give you a video, five minutes, whatever, however long it takes, it doesn't matter. But you can create these kinds of videos. It's absolutely insane. Like how much will this be used? And this is, this is picking up steam very quickly. Like, yeah, we just had all these companies announcing AI last year and now you can create 60 second clips. Like how soon before they start doing text prompts as well or start creating um, storylines and the characters can start talking and then they make them five minutes. You can subscribe and get like a 30 minute episode. People will be creating infinite amounts of new stories. And who's gonna take advantage of this? There are a handful of players. I am invested in pretty much all the large tech companies with the exception, unfortunately, of NVIDIA. Uh, so uh, I will definitely take advantage of this though through some of those large tech companies. They're gonna be swallowing up a lot of new business. Also, I know that I've talked about a couple more risky cryptos recently. I thought this was really interesting though. Uh, a lot of people liked when I had Dan, uh, or sorry, Rob from Digital Asset News on the channel recently. And the video did extremely well. A lot of people watched it. And Rob just made this video talking about a new cryptocurrency. This is one that I've brought up before. And it's one that's going on the Tencent launch, launch pad. I think this is gonna do extremely well. Rob surprised me in the first 10 seconds of this video, or 15 seconds, he says that he's gonna be talking about crypto that has more potential than any crypto he's ever talked about on the channel. That's high praise. I mean, we as crypto influencers talk about hundreds of cryptos throughout the year, and he thinks this has more potential upside. Of course, he did say that there's more risk. When there's more potential upside, there's more risk. But Alvara, hearing that and seeing this video, the explainer, I've made a video on it too, it makes you pretty bullish. So if you haven't already paid attention to this, I'll put my video explaining it on the end screen, or you can go check out Digital Asset News DGen to watch this video. Subscribe to Rob. Uh, I think this has a lot of potential as well. If you don't already have your taxes done for crypto, if you're not already keeping track of all the fees that you're paying, check out BCM underneath the video. We can meet with you and talk you through our process to hand uh, track all your expenses in crypto. We go through every single transaction, so check that out. Also check out the link to HG Access. Take a second to take a look at the, al the algo as well. There's no free trial, but if for some reason you don't like it, let us know. I think this thing is killer though. Like I said, it's really good and it's really just limited by how well you understand it and how well you can um, really dial in your strategy because it really just depends on what fr time frame you're looking at, how it, how it reacts, but it's done extremely well from all the instances that I've seen so far and I've been using it myself to trade a little bit. By the way, there is a link to Marjax underneath the video. I appreciate you guys watching. Let me know your thoughts on this. Let me know your thoughts on Coinbase and Japan and the selling in GBTC. Let me know all of that underneath the video. I appreciate you guys so much. I'll see you in the next one. Bye.